Hi there. I wanted a uh, little uh, single transistor transmitter uh, to use as a uh, remote doorbell and I was inspired to build um, a, a little transmitter after seeing uh, Rick McWhirter's uh, site All American 5 Radio um, but I hadn't got the particular transistor um, uh, that he used despite having a large number of transistors so I had a little look around and I found another circuit and uh, this is the one I'll, I'll, I'll do a proper circuit um, but uh, this one actually uses uh, a BC338 and I'll put a credit to the guy's name uh, another Birmingham lad another Brummie so I don't know where he got the circuit from but it's you know I claim uh, no credit for uh, having done and uh, having designed it but uh, I'm going to lay mine out differently so these are the uh, components there's uh, three resistors uh, four uh, fixed capacitors and a little uh, trimming capacitor there and uh, a transistor oh, I'm not going to make a little coil um, for the tank circuit um, but other than a, a battery that's, that's about it when you build a little transmitter like this um, the biggest problem you'll have is finding resonance and that's the resonant frequency between uh, the tank coil and the tank capacitor in this case I've got a little uh, trimmer and um, a, a little five turn coil and if you can imagine that finding resonance without a meter um, it's a little bit like trying to tune a piano by just pulling out a bit of wire out of a box and stretching it and hoping that you uh, you tune it to middle C um, uh, with uh, your eyes closed and a finger in one ear. It is very tricky. And I thought, well, um, what would help me is I know approximately the number of turns I want on the coil. I know approximately uh, what it should be. Uh, but soldering coils uh, um, on and off the uh, board eventually you can break the board then um, it's a very board uh, you keep on heating it and uh, I'm sure you you may have had the track lift off so what I did was um, I put a little socket arrangement there so that I could uh, plug different coils in I'll just throw that one on the floor uh, that's a little three turn coil and uh, that, that'll plug in there um, and uh, it, it means I could stretch this a little bit uh, if I wanted to to reduce its inductance to uh, get, change frequency what I did do I linked this pin and this pin on the underside uh, as, as one connection and this pin and this pin on the other on the underside as the other connection um, just so as I can plug into either of those two and either of those two and uh, let's say I made different uh, different coils and uh, about five turns is good for me for where I want to operate uh, I did the same thing with the transistor because I thought well I want to play with different transistors so um, that's the reason I've got a little socket for the transistor um, once I've established uh, a, you know, how different transistors perform or what what transistors I can use then I would solder it into place because um, this is very what I would call very twitchy if you uh, you tap this board it's it's microphonic in its own right it doesn't need a microphone just the variation um, in the vibration in the coil is enough to actually pick up uh, an audio signal um, so uh, ultimately I would take that socket off um, solder a coil directly to the pre-CB and then uh, either fill that with adhesive or wax or something to actually uh, consolidate it but anyway I just thought I'd share that with you um, as uh, it may help you because you if you build a thing like this you will struggle finding resonance without a meter and even with a meter uh, so the, the notion of just making a different coil and plugging another one in, I think you will find, will help you. So I've got a little uh, receiver uh, tuned to the transmitter in the VHF range. Um, and uh, I've got a, an AVO which I put 
which I will connect to the output of the radio in a minute. Um, the input to the uh, transmitter I'm using uh, an, an old headphone uh, speaker so I'm using that as a microphone and that goes into the uh, base of the transistor, single transistor. I've got a five turn coil on there, no antenna and um, I'll use this as my audio source, a little uh, ancient dictaphone. So the, you're hearing the sound from here Carry and from here. Um, Alder Moore, that's A L D E R M O O R Way, Longwell Green Industrial Estate, Longwell Green, Bristol. Okay, the I'll just stop there. Uh, the range is not fantastic. It it goes from room to room, and um, obviously, if the walls have got silver foil in them, uh, like the, the plasterboard or insulation, then that'll have a, a, quite a, a dramatic effect. Um, and that's that's working without a, an antenna. It's a bit of fun. But I think what I will do is I will look at a, a lower frequency version of this. Just to give you some idea of how mechanically unstable the uh, coil of this transmitter is, I've disconnected the input uh, to the transmitter. So any sound that you hear will become, other than my voice, will be coming from the radio. And if I just stroke this coil, let me just zoom in. I'm sure you can hear that. Just the slightest thing there, and if I tap it, that's what you call microphonic. And in fact, uh, sometimes um, I've seen bugs, um, it's a little spy bugs where they don't have a microphone, they literally rely on something to uh, disrupt this uh, coil. So they're really unstable, um, but uh, a bit of fun to play with. Um, uh, you'll see in the back of um, radios, your uh, transistor radios, you'll see the VHF section. This is often covered in a, an adhesive, coil like this is often covered in adhesive or wax. Uh, just to uh, rigidize it. Let's say that sound is being that's coming from the uh, from the receiver. It's it's not it's not the actual sound of me tapping it. That you there's there's no sound um, from here. It is just from the receiver. Here I'm about 20 foot away from the transmitter. I've got two internal walls between me and the transmitter here. I found that the power was uh, dropping off quite dramatically uh, in in terms of range. So what I've done, I've just taken this bit of wire, this blue wire here, it's probably about uh, three quarters of a meter or so of wire, and I've simply laid it by the side of the coil and the positive rail which runs across that bit of circuit board there so it's just a little bit of pick up that's made a significant difference and uh, I've just taken the radio outside and um, uh, I've actually measured <laughs> the distance because I didn't want to make an exaggerated claim and um, I've just uh, just measured the uh, the distance for, to where I had the radio and um, uh, that's 40 feet, 40 feet, and um, after that it seems to drop off very dramatically. Um, and that may have something to do with the radio, but I think it's got more to do with the uh, transmitter. But um, anyway, yeah, a little bit of an aerial goes uh, 
a long way. This is the circuit diagram that I've used. Uh, I was going to build ricks, but I hadn't got the uh, the transistor, so I had a look around and I found uh, this circuit. Um, so I think this is essentially what it got, um, but it, it got a, a 5 to 30 picofarad. I've, I've, what I have in uh, my box was a 5 to 50, but if I was going to build another one of these, I would uh, change this and have a series parallel arrangement and have it so that the capacitor um, only affected the frequency a little bit for a, a complete um, traverse of its uh, 5 to 50 picofarads. I only have to touch that and it sweeps up or down the band. Um, uh, the inductor as I've shown in the video um, uh, I've, I've put here five turns it, it you'll you'll make it to suit your particular arrangements and the reason I say that is because of the circuit board layout this little bit of um, uh, capacitance here makes a, a huge difference to the frequency and I might talk about uh, inductors a bit more on another uh, um, another video um, yeah, the inductor is uh, about five turns, but you know, try four, five, or six turns to suit which part of the band you want to work in. I've used each of these transistors: uh, BC547B, BC184L. Uh, the circuit was described originally as having a BC338. I hadn't got one of those, so I haven't tried it. Um, and um, the tests that you've seen me running has been in the main with this PN2222A uh, NPN transistors. Uh, pin configurations are different for those so uh, be aware if you do make them plug in make sure that you get the pins the right way around otherwise you'll um, uh, not like it. Um, I don't think there's anything else to say about it. Oh, the uh, little aerial there, if you're going to put a long aerial on it, probably put a capacitor in series with that couple of picofarads. Um, and um, uh, thanks to everyone that's posted stuff like this on YouTube because I've had a lot of fun playing with it. Oh, uh, the current draw on this is uh, 3.7 milliamps at 9 volts. Okay, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. Remember to follow the uh, regulations regarding transmissions in your country. They could be different from the uh, other parts of the world. And uh, do not abuse uh, the airways at all um, because um, the, the controlling authority will come down on you very heavily and uh, they can confiscate as much of your equipment as they uh, decide so just make sure you don't interfere with anybody and you stay within the law okay thanks for watching bye bye